I'm going to have uh, quite a bit of free time over the next week or so. I actually have a five-day weekend from school. So um, you might see quite a few of these over the next five days because I don't have anything to do. It's real nice. I feel like I cheated somehow getting a five-day weekend just a week into the semester. Great feeling, but feels almost illegitimate. Uh, okay. I guess today we're going to talk about offensive tackles. We're almost near the end here. I'm just going to group left tackles and right tackles together in the same video. I know that they're, you know, different positions and I'm going to address them as such. But I think I can cover both in one video. Alright, up here in the northwest, we've got one of the happiest tackle situations in the league. On the left side, you've got um, the perennial all-pro, or all-pro, perennial, per, perennial pro bowler, um, you know, all-everything, Walter Jones. He plays left tackle, protects, has been protecting the blind side of quarterbacks for coming up close to a decade here in Seattle. Um, guy's been a complete beast um, for a couple of years there in the middle of his career, like 2003 and 2004, he was just a, he was shutting down every right, ta right defensive end that he went up against. And last year you saw him drop off quite a bit. In fact, last year he was downright disappointing. I think he played through a bit of an injury or something, but he gave up ten and a half sacks and you know, it was painful to watch him last year because I know he's a fantastic player and he's probably going to wind up in the Hall of Fame one day, but <sighs> last year was brutal. <clears throat> but he's a fantastic player. I could not be more happy to have him up here. I hope he gets into the Hall of Fame one day. You know, run blocking, pass blocking, he is the complete package. <clears throat> one of the greatest draft picks we've ever made. Um, okay, right tackle. Last year, this position was in a bit of a flux, but I know who I like at this spot, and I know who's going to be starting if we know what's good for us. Sean Locklear. We, this uh, guy was a third-round pick in 2004. You know, he <clears throat> got the full-time starting job in 2005 and was stellar, taking care of players like Julius Peppers and Michael Strahan and Robert Mathis. He was huge for us protecting, you know, the right side of the line. I like him a lot. I know he got in trouble last year. I think he's a wife beater or something. Hope he can get past that because he's a great young player. We just gave him a one-year contract, and after that, we're going to see if we can't extend him. Um, I'd love to have him here for his entire career because he's a great pass blocker, pretty good in the run game too. A little inconsistent, but that's going to come with age. So we've got a very good tandem of starting tackles. I, I'm really going to um, enjoy, probably enjoy watching this group over this next season because they're just a fantastic tandem. Uh, behind them, I guess we still got Tom Ashworth. I don't like this guy at all. Uh, some people might know him a little better as fraud monitoring. <coughs> well, um... I guess he must have done well in New England because he got a lot of credit down there, but um, I don't know. He he was like a matador out there for us, you know, just letting the defensive end go right by him. Leonard Little, ugh, all, all these guys, he just let him go. I'd rather we cut him if at all possible because any money he's making, whatever his salary is, it's too much. So I'm, I really hope he doesn't get on the field if he plays like he did last year. Um, behind him, uh, we've got that rookie, I think the fourth rounder. We had quite a few fourth rounders this last year. His name escapes me right now, but, um, you know, it's he's obviously pretty much a project at this point. Late round draft pick. What can I expect, you know? I mean, last year we got lucky with Rob Sims, who I'll get into in the next video, but... You know, we need to stay healthy on the line because that's what killed us last year and that's what would kill us again this year because I don't really trust any of our rookie, our backup tackles. 
if we could have like a guard or center move out to tackle, well, that's different. Like Floyd Porkchop Womack has spent time at tackle and guard. I think he's played every offensive line position except center, in fact. He's good. He's got no mobility, but he's big, which can be an asset. More so with the guard position than the tackle position, but as far as being a tackle goes, I could live with Womack. Um, you know, we don't. it's not like we have much of a choice, but I guess he would be my first man off the bench. He gets injured too often, so you, know, you just know that's going to happen if he has to play. But, um, okay, I think that's our full tackle situation right now. So, um, you know, the tackle spot in football is pretty self-explanatory. Um, tackles are lined up um, inside the tight ends and outside the guards on the line of scrimmage. <coughs> and basically their job is to take care of the defensive ends on a majority of the plays. When you're playing a 4-3 defense, anyway. Um, it's their job to pass protect, especially the left tackle, who usually protects the quarterback's blind side, meaning that if the left tackle lets his the man he was supposed to be blocking go free, the quarterback is not going to be able to see him until he's right on top of him. So players like Walter Jones, Orlando Pace, Jonathan Ogden, these guys don't make hot, um, you know, the highlight reel, but they're elite players. They could land in the Hall of Fame one day because of the work they've done protecting quarterbacks. And right tackles have this responsibility too, especially in an offense like Arizona, which features a right-handed, left-handed quarterback, which is why they spent such, you know, a high pick on that uh, tackle at number five overall, because that's the blind side over there. And um, you know, you also got to block in the running game. You got to take the defensive ends out of the game. <clears throat> push them out of the way, clear up holes for your running back, um, pancake them to the ground, whatever you got to do to clear up lanes for your running back. But it's not all about defensive ends. Sometimes you got pulling tackles that'll like loop around behind the line of scrimmage and then <clears throat> just clear out whoever happens to get in their way. Um, sometimes a tackle will deal with a blitzing linebacker or a safety or something. Um, which is why mobility is becoming more and more important to the position. Um, you've got, you know, tackles taking care of, like, three, four outside linebackers. It's not it's not easy, especially when you're facing a team that likes to blitz a lot and throw a lot of funky blitzes and coverages at you. But um, there are also quite a few underrated... Oh, I'll get into that in a second. Okay, the best left tackle in the game right now... Um, I think it's got to be Jonathan Ogden. I know he's slowing down. I know he's getting old. In fact, he almost retired this last year, which gives you an idea of how over the hill he's starting to get. But he's a beast out there. Great in the run blocking game. Beastly in the pass protection game. Great anchor for that offense. Um, one of the big reasons why they're able to be so smart with the ball and let their defense win game f games for them. Um... Under overrated left tackle, um, you know, this is tough. I think maybe DeBrickashaw Ferguson, even though he was a rookie last year, he did give up 10 sacks, which is quite a bit for a rookie. Even for a rookie, um, you know, he got a lot of credit by going fourth overall and being kind of considered the savior of the Jets franchise. You know, he didn't do much last year. He wasn't particularly good in run blocking or pass blocking, but I think he'll come along nicely, but it's too early to give him any credit. Ten sacks last year, and you saw the Jets running game. It was horrible. Um, underrated left tackle. This is easy for me. Chad Clifton in Green Bay. He needs to get more attention. He needs to start making Pro Bowls because in that offense, you've got... a. Uh, you know, a quarterback who loves to throw the ball, throw it deep, and throw it a lot. And he hardly gives up any sacks. I believe his percentage of dropbacks to sacks allowed is far and away the best in the league. Um, so he's a complete... And he's great in the running game. Run blocking game, which is why Green Bay is able to plug in so many different players and get decent games out of all these running backs. So, um, breakout left tackle this year... Well, I guess Marcus McNeil already broke out, but I think he's going to become a shutdown dominant left tackle this year for the San Diego Chargers, so him. All right, that's all I got to say. I'm out.